Oh, we're ready to to record. So, uh, commit booth duty, Samia. Thank you for. I saw you already posted on the uh, thing, and Brian did too. And so, uh, Parker, if you could grab a slot on the uh, schedule there, and Alita will need a, a, some slots as well, so we can cover that. And then Cormac, Cindy, I. Uh, I recuse the three of us from uh, commit booth duty, given the other scope of stage architect stuff. Thank you. That was nice. Yep. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try to do last last year. I did um, the entire 24 hour uh, live chat, and that was a mistake. But I'm going to try <laughs> to be in there for as many chats as possible because I don't think. I, I think there. I know of some cases where the speakers won't be able to make it. So I want to be sure there's someone in there to answer the chat questions. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, you know, this is um, this is one of those things where like we we knew this. This is, but we didn't account for it. Um. So cover. You know, cover, commit, chat for APAC hours. That is an agenda item we should add to our architect sync. And we're like right up on the heels of it. So I don't know if there's, I don't know who, like, who we can get to sync that time, but um let's add well, that i would try you know in some cases it could be a, the speaker could cover it and the other case is depending upon their time zone and the other case um you know we could probably get an sa or a pm um that's in a good time zone for it to to cover right i i remember doing that last time and i i remember there being a scramble around it and there's just no like these are all the things we need to do for commit. Like that's a thing we need to do, but it's not on a checklist anywhere. So he's at my door. Uh, so um, Q3 OKRs. So let's let's chat a little bit about some of these things. Uh, do, 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 do. Just going to share my screen here. So what I am pretty excited about is we are marching towards doing this in a more organized fashion that, you know, I don't, I don't think we've had this, this level of rigor and we should be looking to do more rigor as we uh, move on. So I added a link here. These are SIDS OKRs, which are a GitLab managed future conversion from free and even prouder to work here. So uh, what's nice then is uh, Craig's OKRs roll up to that. So Craig's OKRs are increased funnel and drive pipeline, elevate marketing messaging positioning, and maintain high team member uh, delight through strong prioritization and collaboration. Uh, so what's nice is these are rolling up. So then when you get, and then I linked uh, Craig's OKR deck here. If you wanna poke into that, there's, there's more info there. So when you start to look at our OKRs, they roll up to that, to those, you know, they, ours, ours really roll up to Harsh, Harsh's roll up to Craig's, Craig's roll up to Sid, and hey, alignment. So that is exciting because in an ideal world, the, the, the projects that we are planning align to the strategic goals. So um, in some ways, this doc is, still in draft. So for example, I need to get, 
I have a call with Ryan this week. I want to get like a full list of what can we expect for RFIs and reports so we can plan that uh, bandwidth, right? Um, similarly, there are things on here like our corporate event support. I think these ones we've are, are well documented which ones we're covering. The field marketing events. Um, so ideally what we're doing here, and I, and I see that some folks have already kind of started to chime in and been like, yeah, I can pick up this one. And, and I think that that's good. What I want to, what I basically want to avoid is I want to avoid like, you know, Cindy has like eight webinars this quarter and like I have two or, you know, that kind of like imbalance. So between field events, demand gen webinars, partner webinars, and ABM webinars, like I want to make sure that we kind of balance out that load. It's kind of what I'm aiming for here. Uh, here we have a list and then it has a link here and this is the list of proposed field events. So we did this last quarter and got, I think eight. This quarter we got 18. That gives me a little bit more confidence that we're more a little bit more comprehensive. So I have an action item to, to go through these and try to, I might, pop them in a spreadsheet or something so that we can look at like, how many is Parker doing? How many is Cormac doing? You know, any, any questions on just the, the webinars for the quarter? Cool. So sorry, I missed part of that. So you want us to put in what we're signed up to or you want us, or you're putting them in based upon the requests? So uh, ideally we, kind of like batch process these. So my current, what I'd like to do if I ever get like five minutes of extra time uh, that I'm not, you know, just jammed with stuff. Uh, commit, commit is taking like meaningful amounts of my time. But in an, in an ideal world, uh, this list here, like, uh, what do I want? So here, so in, in some ways this is nice because this is, uh, you know, all in issues. So, but it, it it's kind of makes it cumbersome to, to filter. So ideally what I could do is I could look at this and I could say like, are these evenly distributed across the team? Does everyone on the team, are they picking up a few, right? Rather than like one person being loaded with a ton. Um, and are they like, you know, is field marketing asking Parker to deliver like five events the same week that, you know, major project plan is due for release marketing or something like that, right? Well, you might think we can manage this by like, we could sign up, we could look at the list and assign ourselves to the ones that we think are appropriate and we can self-manage if we've got too many in one week or big conflicts we can say hey i can't do this can somebody else do this that yeah that's a good that's a good call there's i don't the the managing conflicts versus your projects is i think good um we need some type of all team collaboration we need we need some way so for example like i looked at the ones from last week i don't think everybody put them in there uh wherever we had. So Brian had none. Cindy, you had, I don't know, one, two, three, four, but, five. But I, yeah, I just had too much seven. going on. But I, don't take, oh, I have a yeah, list there. It's like, but I wouldn't want you to look at that and go, you have too many, you need to farm some of those out because sometimes mm -hmm. I'm able to reuse content from one to the other. Some, they're all DevSecOps topics. Some of it was on, I was the spokesperson for the DevSecOps survey. So a bunch of them came from that. Um, and honestly, I just tend to have more of those and of the customer meetings than other people 
but that's okay. And maybe I have less of something else. I don't, I feel like it's a little bit artificial to feel like you've got to distribute it for us. We I have a list so, somewhere. I'll be putting it in. I think it was so five. What, what we, what we need to do though is, so we need to make sure that for all of these projects that we're signing up for, and a lot of them are like horizontal. So for example, like launch plan development, right? Um, like this is a new, uh, you know, a new practice that we haven't really done before. So, so we'll need to look as a team what launches are coming up even. And uh, we, we just need to make sure that our kind of our priorities are in sync and that we have coverage across. So I'm not necessarily saying like we need to kind of artificially flow it. And I definitely don't necessarily want to like dole out like you're doing this one, you're doing this one. But I do want to make sure that there's some spread across the team. Right. Oh, I do want to make sure that like everyone's at least doing some events. And uh, I do want to make sure that we cover them. And I do want to make sure that we, you know, are getting to our other kind of priorities and content generation. So those are, that, that's kind of like the, we got to get some kind of wrangle on this. And then frankly, I like, I personally lost a meaningful, significant chunk of my time last quarter due to field last minute asking me for stuff. And I had to shift things around and I had to like chat with FMM managers and like, I don't have time for that this quarter. So like the last quarter we did, like everybody just grab events and I prefer that. I like, I prefer decentralized, but like, I cannot commit the time this quarter to like what fell through the cracks and what did we miss? So I, I need to be injected somewhere in there to say like, look, we have a plan that I feel good about and like my time won't be sucked some point at the future. Is, is that kind of fair? Yeah, but I think, I think if you tell us what we, what, you know, you've told us the objectives, I think we can sign up, manage ourselves and. Yeah, like let's, let's do this then. We, we just, we need them to all be covered and we need them to not. So, so what we also need to do too is across these 18 events, like some of these are for PMM and some of these are for TMM. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all, it just, it just needs to be managed. Like um, I am not comfortable saying like, go and sign up for stuff and then I'll just see what doesn't get signed up for. Why not? Because that didn't work last quarter and it was extremely painful. What didn't, what part of it didn't work? We didn't sign up like we were supposed to, or they didn't give us the full list in advance like they were supposed to. Uh, I, th I think that the full list wasn't there. Um, that, that's a, that's a good question. I can, I can kind of go back and maybe think about like, okay, what, what went wrong? What, what were the kind of problems? What are we trying to optimize for? Like, we're, I'm going to do this. I'm going to review all of the items. That's what we're going to do. So if there are ones that you want to sign up for, go ahead and comment in there. This will be part of the process this quarter. Instead of commenting, if we assign it, then you could, you could do a board or a filter for which ones are not assigned or, uh, you know, which ones are assigned to, to each of us. Oh, just a thought. Well, there's problems with that too, though. Like, like some of these are already assigned to people. Some are assigned to multiple people. Like they're not, they're not consistent. So like we need a consistent view. Uh, 
what else? I have a quick of... question on yeah, that. Yeah. One. Oh. yeah. So are we are we gonna um, take up all the field marketing events or are we gonna prioritize based on the OKR that we have actually set for ourselves, which is I think pipeline, if I'm not wrong, pipeline generator. Yes, yes, hundred percent. So um in your attribution, I think, is the metric. Well, so there's two there's two elements here, and we gotta we should chat in a moment about KPIs. So KPIs are going to be different than OKRs, but they're they are related. Um, so here, the the OKR, the key result for this objective, is to increase funnel velocity and drive pipeline. So yes, by the uh, as we look at these events, if we can't pick up all of them, then ideally we're asking questions like, like which one of these, uh, what's the revenue potential? And we make sure that we pick up the ones that are the most, um, like we're prioritizing, we're prioritizing based on the key result we're aiming for, absolutely. I, I don't know that we're to that level of sophistication yet. Um, like I said, this is like a step of maturity up from what we did last quarter, but eventually, like ideally what we would have is for these KRs, we would say, we're doing this and we expect this out of it. We're doing this and we expect this out of it. So we, we haven't done that level of rigor. I don't, we're not gonna get there for this quarter, but um, certainly on any of these, that, that is the lens to look through. It's like, hey, you're, for this, we're trying to drive pipeline, 100%. Cool. Um, so we're trying to get these finalized. What else? Okay. So one other element to this is uh, this is the OKR epic. So this has Craig's three OKRs. And then if you drill into one of these epics, for example, like you know, increase pipeline that we were just looking at. This does have some specific results like, you know, web direct purchases, that's super interesting there. Um, and that's on dunks, looking for web direct for first order. So I just, anyway, I just noticed that. Uh, but here's an example of like product marketing, reposition, free product to individuals and paid product to business. Honest, honestly, I'm like just double clicking at this now because I'm trying to think like, how does this align to this? I'm also wondering if that is, is that public? Oh no, yeah, it's not confidential. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah these are all public. I all think this are. was, this was one of the ideas that Craig had for the pricing page A-B test, where he said that our message on the free should say uh, for individual users and uh, for the paid to say for business users or enterprise users or something like that, right? So that's in our pricing page backlog, uh, but I don't know if he had something else in mind as well uh, around this topic. So that we, we might need to add something here that aligns to that. Um, honestly, we didn't, like you can see in our doc, we went from like Craig's to the teams. So we didn't go to that level. Um, the one that I know about is for example, here in this messaging and positioning, we have, this golden pitch, right? So this is something that uh, Cormac is leading up, which is like golden pitch certification. And honestly, some of this also needs to be rethought. Now we were gonna run this at contribute. So maybe we, I don't know if this is still on the docket and we run it at, uh, you know, async. We'll probably, actually this is a good agenda item for a call later today, Cormac. Um, the reason I want to point this out to the rest of the team is 
This comes from Craig. And then Craig has one that cascades down to Harsh. And then for this one, Harsh will probably just like it cascades right down to me. And then it cascades right down. So Cormac will be the assignee here. Like this will literally be Cormac is leading this project. So uh, ideally for each of these things, we have an OKR issue in this marketing planning uh, project. And that's on my, like Tracy's already logged all of her. So this is like a to-do for me to do. The reason I wanna bring it up to the team now is because it means we'll have some duplication. So you'll have like your normal issue where you're working on your stuff and you can, you can organize it and structure it. And then, you know, if it's an OKR, there'll be like some accompanying OKR issue. And what I don't wanna do is I don't want to impose the constraint, like you must work your project out of this marketing planning project. I think that'll cause all kinds of mess. So the, the way to roll it is there'll just be, there'll be some duplication. So in some cases, like I might have an issue and you might have some projects that are under that issue. In some cases, like you might, you yourself might be assigned to that issue. Any kind of questions on just this, the OKRs or the planning, the way they're trying to roll it up? Cool. Uh, so KPIs. Um, so uh, we had a, a solid discussion on this last time and we've iterated here. This has been reviewed with Craig. And so uh, the idea here with OKRs, those are quarterly, right? The KPIs are intended to be like longer term, right? So in, in theory, like our OKR should be driving our KPIs, they should be related, but, but one is ephemeral and one is, you know, intended to be like a longer, like we're, we're tracking these things as a team over time. Uh, so some attributes of this, uh, you know, per kind of Samia's comments last week and Craig wanted this as well and Harsh too. And I, uh, me too, I've, I've, I've been sold by the team uh, that we want more of a direct line so as an example, if we say, okay, well, we're delivering web content. So we're going to be responsible for something like, you know, inquiries on the website. Now, if we're just responsible for the total inquiries number and we share that with say Danielle's team, A, there's some confusion because like, who's actually responsible? Is it us or Danielle? And then B, like we don't contribute to all the inquiries. So that doesn't really make sense. The idea is that we as a team should be incentivized to make them successful. So that's kind of like, like we as a team work horizontally across teams in marketing. So that's why you see like alignment with Danielle's team, alignment with Dunk's team, alignment with Evan's team. And then, so that's the horizontal. And then here is the, the ideally we're trying to tie it more of a straight line to the work we do. So quite frankly, I don't, I don't know how we're gonna instrument for this. We start to get back into some of, the, some of the goofiness we had in the past. I think there's a few guardrails here. So one is I don't wanna track views for like all content ever where we have some complicated matrix and we're trying to like track down every YouTube video and all of this kind of goofiness. Like we should just have a web dashboard that is like, this is the web content that we put out and we can track things like page views and bounce rate. Uh, yeah, what do you think, Sonia? Yeah, I think this is great. It's, it's a move in the right direction. Um, I think page views is still a little bit goofy because like, like we discussed previously as well, we, we don't have control on how people are gonna land on this page, right? Yes, we can do a little bit of SEO, but if the solution is not, let's say at the top of the, um, uh, on our homepage header, then nobody's gonna be able to find a particular page 
I think that goes back to the question on whether we need that page at all or not, or, and whether we should invest our time on that. I think bounce rate is a better metric on the content itself, because it shows that if a customer is not engaged on that content, then they would move. Bounce rate is one and time on page is, uh, is the other metric that we could look at rather than having page views. That's in my opinion. So uh, we, we need to track if the content is valuable, for example, from an SAO perspective. If, if people are searching and landing on that page, and if a page is valuable in a customer journey, we need to be incentivized as a team to collaborate with the rest of marketing to get it into that flow. Yeah. So what metric would you propose to incentivize those things? So, if if it's about collaboration and working on the journey then page views is a good metric right because then we need to think about it from a customer's point of view customer lands on the front page then wants to say let's say wants to know more about cicd or gitops right how do they land on that page today for example gitops they cannot land on directly unless they land directly on that page through an seo search right because it's not part of the top header um solution header that we have on our home page and we don't expose the solution tab anymore on our home page other than at the footer of the page right and there are many many such pages like that uh, we don't have one specifically for continuous delivery as an example um so if we have to work with the extended team to get that in place, then we need an overall um, information architecture like we spoke about, right? Like, how do we, how, what's the journey that the customer needs to take and what use cases that we want to uh, showcase to the customer? And only those are things that we should, as a team, pick up and work on rather than putting together 10 different pages. Like, we spoke about this theme pages for, for pricing themes. There's no way that a customer can land on those pages except through SEO, right? We wouldn't link to that from the pricing page. We wouldn't link to it from the main page either. So that's mostly going to be just an SEO uh, effort. Right. So the, the essentially, we want to have a decision matrix. Like, yeah. I'm going to have page A or page B. Which one should I invest time in? Should I generate a new page or should I refresh an existing page? Yeah. Like overall views is something that like page views on PMM page content is something that we want to track. Um, the other end of this too, and Craig was like really open to this was um, ideally these are long-term and then we're, tra we're tracking trends over time. But given that our KPIs have been so goofy and ridiculous for a year plus, um, we just need to try something, right? So we need to measure and get some baselines and maybe there is a better metric or we iterate next quarter. Um, but this is kind of like a quantity and a quality metric. So we want to look at both of those. We both want to get like, and then I, again, it's like the idea here is like, if we generate more top of funnel volume, in this case, we're measuring that by page views, but that the assumption there is that it's a leading metric to feed things like inquiries and self-service, right? So that's what we also want to track, not just, so we want to track that like this is a page and this page individually performs well, like when people land on it, they don't bounce, but we also need some type of measure that we are contributing to the downstream thing, which is the inquiries and the, and the self-service signups, which page views would also get to that, so. Uh, so similarly here for demand gen content, uh, I don't know, again, I don't know how we're going to instrument for this. It is, I'll tell you what it will not be is it, this will not be us architecting our own separate machine. Like for all of these, like whatever we measure, like this measure, like these measures need to come through Google analytics, like through the, whatever the web normal measurement thing is, 
like our measurement for our KPI can't be like, well, we need some other tool to do that. We have to like work within the, the confines of what we're measuring. So it's the same thing for demand gen, right? Like demand gen has this uh, dashboard, which I wonder if I can like pull it quickly. Actually, I probably can't show in a public video, but you know, they're already tracking things. They're tracking things like inquiries and SAOs and MQLs, and they track linear attribution. So, so that's already a metric that's being tracked. We just need to segment out the PMM content. So in theory here, and this should be like everything that drives the pipeline. Like if it's in uh, Path Factory and it's PMM contributed, like we should be able to pull a number out of that. I don't know how we're gonna instrument for that. I'm open to ideas. Think about that one. Uh, this one should be a lot easier. Um, essentially like a while back, do y'all remember we had this thing and there was like five levels of like, you know, did you write the content? Did you review the content? Did you all like, it was really, really goofy. And then we like had this extra job of going and like coding all of that. We really need to avoid that. Like as much as possible when we measure stuff, it should be like a normal part of the process. Like we went and did this work and then like there's not some meaningful significant extra task to go and measure it. So uh, for field uh, events, they already track the linear attribution. It's already part of the Salesforce object. So this should be as simple as, as like looking at, you know, this, this list of events and saying like, these are the events for the quarter. We know what the list is. Let's go pull the linear attribution. These ones are like PMM contributed events. Uh, so that's kind of the, the thought there. Any, any kind of other thoughts on, on KPIs? Measurement? Uh, yeah, this might be a little down in the weeds, but eventually are we going to get to the point where we are, like how we attach ourselves to that is going to be interesting to figure out. Like, are, are we 10% of that? Are we 20% of that? Are we competing with other groups for that? Like what is our, because, you know, we could, we could contribute to something that's hugely valuable for the company, but how much time is it still worth putting into that? If we're going to budge the needle 5% versus 60% and something that's ultimately less value for the company, but we might actually be generating more value. As is there a, a like part a, of that smaller hole? Uh, is there, for instance, that kind of comes to mind? Uh, yeah, so field um, a reinvent. Um, maybe we put in fifty hours for reinvent, and reinvent's hugely successful. But there are a zillion other people working on that as well. And like, how do we determine how much impact our participation had in that versus the other folks, and then judge? Yeah, so that that is not a KPI that's that's on here now. Uh, corporate, so corporate events is not on there. That's a great call. I don't like, this is not comprehensive, right? This is like a stab at um, incentivizing meaningful things that will move the needle, right? So we know that this team is team of subject matter experts. This team knows the customer, knows the product, knows the market. Like no one else can generate the quality and type of content that we can for the web, for demand generation or for field. And so, and we know that when we do that, we know when we put stuff up on the web, like it drives outcomes for the business. We know that when we do field events, it drives outcomes for the business. And that's why those are on the OKRs as well. So this is like, kind of picking the low hanging fruit of like, we know this does drive business outcomes. That's why we want to track it. Um, yeah, for something like a, you know, commit. <laughs> like, you know, we're putting amazing amounts of time into commit. How do we get credit for that as a PMM team? I, I'm not, I don't know yet. Well, yeah, and, and how, how do we know, like, part of it's getting credit is part, and part of it is just knowing where to spend our time. If we can, if we can double, if we can double the value of something that's worth a third as much versus increasing at 
you know, somewhere else. Yeah. So I have two, I have two bits of guidance on that. Right. So, um, well, let's think through that for the moment. So I would say one, if, if there is some project, something that you believe, if I invest my time in thing X, it will meaningfully move this needle. Like to your point, it's like, this could, this could like increase this by 50%, not just 5%. Like that should be easy to justify, even if it's not like a specific KPI. Um, and maybe let's like have a conversation about it, right? Like let's bring that, maybe the whole team should be doing that thing, whatever that is, right? So like, if you see that thing and you're like, I can have big impact here, that should be like the overarching decision matrix, right? Like as you're looking at like all the stuff you spend your time on, like what's driving meaningful goals. Um, the other one is like, we got to keep the lights on, right? Or what we call like business, like business as usual. So like this doesn't track like sales enablement. This doesn't track messaging and positioning really. Like it's, a, oh, it's an OKR for us, but we're not like, you know, we don't have like a KPI that's like, how many people used our messaging? Like there's things that we need to do as a team that's, that's we're probably not ever going to be tr able to track, but they're important things to do, right? And hey, William, I'm, yeah. I'm just curious. I know you're in some product marketing association or something. Do, do they have, um, like a library of things that they share where you could see examples of what other people do? They do. So uh, the, the challenge is, is how, so I've looked, I, I looked into all of that as well. And um, they do actually, there's a PDF they put out. If I can, if I can track down the PDF, I'll, I'll share that with a group. Um, the nutshell of it is that PMM works really differently in different places, right? So, mm -hmm. In, in other orgs, product marketing owns campaigns. They don't have, like, there is no Jackie's team. Like this team is Jackie's team. And like this team has an MQL number that they need to hit. But like, that doesn't make sense for us because like, we're not the campaigns team. Um, in, in other orgs, uh, product marketing might even own like a revenue number, right? Like uh, when I was at Twilio, like every product team functioned uh, uh, pretty much autonomously. Like the PM was a little CEO and the PMM was a little CMO and we were responsible for our business. Like we had a weekly meeting where we had like, this is the revenue that our product is generating. And the marketing plan had to contribute to driving revenue for the product, but we don't work that way, right? So in, in, like the things that other, so these are metrics that have come from others. So there are things like other PMM orgs, they track their web content performance. Um, they track their webinar content performance, right? They track like the demand gen content that uh, PMM generates. Those are, those are things that other orgs do. Um, some of those other metrics though are like, don't make sense for us. Is bounce rate um, set in stone? Do we know like what pages that focuses on? I've always been a little iffy on bounce rate in general, right? Because if it's a page, if the intent is to have multiple views, if you if the intent is to go to multiple pages or multiple views, then a high bounce rate is good, right? Um, no, no, no. So bounce bounce rate measures like um, if somebody lands on the page and that content's like not meaningful to them. Like, cause you have bounce rate and you have exit rate. Right. So, so the, this, this is the page bounce rate, Parker. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So we want people to- uh, we, we want, want a lower to bounce rate. on the page in. Cause if we want people to view, if the success of the page we're talking about depends on people going to more than one page, then a high bounce rate is bad. So we want people to go through a journey and go to multiple places. B bounce rate would be like, I came to this page and I backed out of it. Right. If they, if they come, if they come to a page and they're like, this is the next step in my journey. And then they go to that next page. That's good. Okay. All right. So, but, but um, the, okay. there's just some pages where a bounce rate wouldn't make sense. Right. Cause we don't want them to go anywhere else. 
No, 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 no. Let's let's you and I sync on on what bounce rate is because it's it's a little more nuanced than that. Okay. Um, I will share with the team that another potential metric here might be like click through rate. So the idea would be if we identified on every one of our pages, what's the next step, which might be go to another page or it yeah. might be fill out a lead cap or the, there might be some action. Okay. And then we would measure that action. Like was the action taken? The reason I, I don't want to do that this quarter is because we're not instrumented for it. Yeah. So in order to instrument a symptom, right. Or, you know, a lot of times it's showing like a symptomatic piece of a journey as opposed to being indicative of value, but yeah. Well, we're just, we don't have the measurement for it. So Google okay. analytics can do that, but we don't have the trackers on the page to measure. Gotcha. That. Okay. So this stuff we can measure today. We'll do that for this quarter. And maybe in the future, we, we get more granular or more specific. Cool. Um, this is cool. Uh, sales QBRs uh, are optional. Um, <laughs> this uh, this quarter, we probably should chat about um, what kind of async review we would want to commit to, or I, we need to think about this. If anybody has a has a proposal, I value like a proposal. Like I think the team should do this, and then the an idea here is kind of if you think about it in like an eighty twenty. So like you want to get like you want to do enough research that you understand something and then you want to generate like more content out of that thing. So ideally, like we're not like, you know, diving 50 layers deep into like customer stuff. We're just like, we understand the customer. We know the customer, we're the customer expert. Okay. Now let's go use that information and, and drive our, all of our other content we need to generate. So, uh, Thank you for the time team. Uh, let's catch up async on some of these other threads that are still going on. Cool, everybody, happy Monday. Thank you, see ya.